is my silver reel. Welcome back to Silver Flyer here on location in the People's Republic of China. Today I'm doing a video in response to some of your questions and also a video that I've wanted to do for some time and that's how do I know what I'm buying is real? I've had some questions, of course you see somebody out here on YouTube buying silver, pandas, uh, gold pandas, whatnot in China. The first thing we think when we hear China is fake. So that can happen anywhere in the world. I've had feedback from um, some of the YouTube uh, participants from Europe, from America, and uh, elsewhere who also have the same concerns and some of the same problems in their own countries. So this can happen anywhere. And of course, you're going to question that. Now, to start off, I want to say, you know, this is China, and that's what we think of it as an outsider. From inside China, people here are perfectly aware of fakes coming out of China, and they are produced here, no doubt, of all types and sorts. But the thing you have to know is, and if you don't already know, is uh, law enforcement and um, surveillance and whatnot is, is, is very, very stringent here in China. So it would be hard to do something and get away with it. And added to that, any currency, now this being a, a Chinese panda, it's also marked a government currency, and all countries do it, they mark their own currency on it, as 10 renminbi in this case, for a 2019 panda, silver panda, and you get to the 30 gram uh, gold panda, and you have 500 renminbi on it. So, to fake one of these, not a poured silver bar or something like that, to fake one of these is counterfeiting. And counterfeiting, I would have to say in China, would, would at least get you life in prison, if not worse. So I think that reduces some of the chance in that logically thinking about this here, if I, if I were a criminal in China, um, I might want to fake some gold or silver coins. I would probably, number one, do it uh, with a foreign currency say um, uh, silver eagles or silver maples or something like that, and then ship them out of the country. Even so, if you get caught shipping something like that out of the country, it will still land you in jail. However, I'm not sure if it will be as severe as doing the local currency or faking the local currency. That being said, we still have a question, and it's a valid question you've asked me, and I've actually worried about that myself. Now, of course, you can get you know, fancy documents that go with, you know, each coin here. You can have fancy packaging from People's Bank of China. You know, looks good. All can be faked, right? And you've got your specific receipts and whatnot. That's just paper promises like fiat currency. It's only worth the paper it's written on. Although it is a little bit comforting to see that it's all provided uh, willingly. What we want to do is see that, you know, what I'm getting, uh, I, I have a way of testing it. And these are simple ways you can do it with minimal amount of tools. They're non-invasive, doesn't damage the metal at all. You do need a digital scale, best in at least tenths of a gram uh, or one hundredths of a gram, better yet. Uh, your digital calipers, um, those are also handy. Not very expensive, depending on, now this is a cheap Chinese set. And I'm, I'm not sure they're the greatest, but they do work. You'll need uh, uh, a calculator. So in this case, today we're going to use just the one on my iPad. And another thing you're going to need for specific gravity testing is a specific gravity chart like this, listing all types of metals and their specific gravity. So we'll go over that in a moment. Um, and the first set of tests I'd like to do is the actual weight and measurement. So for that, pretty straightforward. You can go on to, I went on to one of my dealers here. This is a Silver Gold Bowl in Canada. I do believe they have uh, other international locations. Look up your 2019 Silver Panda and scroll down to the bottom and you find specifications. And the ones we're concerned with today are the measurements, diameter 40 millimeters, average thickness 2.85, and its uh, weight. Now, this is the metal weight in ounces troy, 0 0.9645, multiplied by 31.1, gives you 30 grams exactly, which is our Chinese panda. And again, just to uh, confirm again, this is legal tender currency, Chinese yuan at uh, 10 
you want. Face value. So uh, I'll get this unpackaged here. I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna get on to do some simple testing that you can do at home and we'll answer the questions that you've given me. All right, back with you again. I've taken the object out, uh, the coin out of the capsule in the packaging and I have it ready. White gloves are of course an option for you. In this case, I decided to use them because I have a Chinese panda. We try to keep them in good shape here. They're usually pretty nice coins. So first off, we'll start with the weight. 30, 30.05. So again, we had the weight in troy ounces here. Um, and I've already figured that out to be what the uh, weight on the face is, is also 30 grams and that's bang on. So no red flag there. Next, take our digital calipers and I'm gonna turn them on, zeroed out. Now we're looking at the diameter. I'm gonna be careful not to scratch the coin, lightly making contact with the coin. And we'll go for diameter. If you see it there, 40.04. I mean, that's to me, that's bang on. That's right, we're right on the money, so to speak, right? Pardon the pun. And next would be the diameter. Now, I'm going to mention these are not the best calipers made in China. The usual joke goes, even the Chinese joke about that. I've heard them joke about it. So, we're going to go for diameter again, light contact with the metal. Now we're going for an average thickness. Now I'm on the rim right now, 2.83. So 2.85, I mean, we're within two one hundreds. As far as I'm concerned, this coin is bang on, no red flags on measurement or weight. So what that tells me is basically that is a density measurement, if you think about it. Maybe not a super scientific one, but the size or the volume which would be the amount of space it, it, it fills. Now being 40 by 2.85 is the dimensions and checking out on the weight. If you had a different metal inside of here, say this was a silver plated piece of metal, um, you wouldn't be able to fake it. Some, one of the measurements would be off, either the weight or the actual physical size of the coin would have to be in order to make the weight work. One or the other would be wrong. So here's that, Already, you've proven the coin is to be real, but the next one I'd like to get into is a little more scientific, is the specific gravity testing. It's also a fairly easy process. We'll get into that right away. Now getting into specific gravity testing. From my understanding, what this is, is the measurement of the density of an object. Each metal, each type of material will have its own density that can't be faked or replicated. Um, you'll only need a few basic tools to do this, and you can do this with your gold, your silver, bars, coins, it doesn't really matter. You can even do it with diamonds or copper or, or whatever. And as I'll show you, there's a specific gravity chart for uh, various types of objects. You'll need a good digital scale, um, tenths of a gram or hundreds of a gram better. You need a cup of water, and you'll need your, your, um, your object, which in this case is a silver coin, panda coin, and you'll need to tie it up and hopefully so it doesn't spin or fall into the water. I figured out how to do that through some experimentation here. Getting into the definition first, just so you understand what it is, specific gravity in the dictionary is the ratio of the density of a substance, silver in this case, to the density of a standard, usually water, for a solid. In this case, it's a glass of water. The calculation is really simple. Your specific gravity is the density of your sample, which is the silver coin, by the density of it suspended into the water. Now, specific gravity chart, this is the one I found. You can find them anywhere on the internet. They're actually pretty easy to find. It gives you a whole list of different types of materials. Again, these are for metals. And uh, up here you have gold at 19.32 specific gravity. And you have very, uh, variable types of gold, you have yellow gold, green gold, red gold, uh, you know, uh, 18 karat, 14 karat, whatever you want. And down here for us is the silver. 
So in the silver, 10.49 is specific gravity, and we'll talk about that in one second. Sterling silver, 10.36, and coin silver, 10.31. So sterling would be your jewelry or your um, uh, silverware, and then your coin silver would be your junk metal uh, or junk silver and constitutional silver. So you can also confirm those materials. So specific gravity, 10.49. Now there's always variables, and I found a few variables myself here, and I'm going to cover them with you. Um, so it could be the temperature of the water, could be the material of what you're using, the string in this case, uh, that sets things off a little bit. Um, you're given a range, 10.4 to 10.6, and I'm not sure what the temperature of the water is supposed to be, but mine's a little bit cold. So I found that kind of threw things off a little bit. Um, the basic equation comes down to this, just specific gravity testing is your weight in grams divided by the gram weight suspended in the water equals your specific gravity. And for this case, silver 10.49 is bang on and your range is given at 10.4 to 10.6. So we'll get set up here. Just give me one second. All right, apologize about the stop in the video there. I did have a little issue. Uh, the string fell off the coin and fell onto the tissue here. So I had to get it tied up. And it's one of the difficulties is finding such a small piece, a round piece uh, to tie that up uh, is a little bit difficult. So first off, we we'll start with uh, get your scale on and measure the weight. 3.05. 3 3.05. 3.05. Now, nope. Put your water on, your cup of water, tear the weight out, wait for it to settle down there. Anytime the coin or the water moves around, the weight also shifts as well. So that's the hardest part about doing this. So tear the weight out back to zero, and you have to suspend deep enough that it's fully submerged and not touching the sides. And you see it's spinning here. That is a little bit of an issue. It usually stops once it's in the water. Fully submerged, 2.3. 2.88, I would say the average is, 2.88. So we had our weight of the coin itself. We're gonna divide that by 2.88, giving us 10.434, which is a good result. It's right in that range there, 10.4 to 10.6. A little bit below this number, being below or being a slightly above is, is not an issue. That's why you're given this range. So it doesn't really mean anything. What this does confirm though, is this can be only one material and that is uh, pure silver. And as you'll see on the graph here, I'll go back to that here, this specific gravity graph. You can go through this on your own and there's really nothing that's even close to 10.49 uh, silver, unless it's sterling silver, coin silver, which are 10.36 and 10.3 respectively. Um, as far as being a different type of metal, say it had been a, a, a nickel plated, uh, um, a nickel metal plated with silver to kind of fool a buyer, um, you, uh, you'd have to be, I, I don't know, you, you wouldn't, you'd have to have different uh, measurements, number one, to get past the earlier measurement and weight but you won't have that. You can't fake the density. That's one thing you cannot fake. The only one that's even close is this Molly de, de Denim here. I think it is 10.2. That's the closest one I can find on this chart if it's not tight, some type of silver already. Now being below the 10.4 could indicate sterling silver or coin silver. And that's, uh, you know, you can check for that as well. But you definitely have a result here. And that is confirming that it's pure silver at 10.2. For, what was it? 10.43? 10.43, sorry. Um, and uh, that's a good result. Lastly, we have visual comparison. Now, I'll say I'm not an expert at this, and I've done this with several of the other coins I've bought here in China, as well as coins at home. But if you look at the fonts, you look at the details of the coin, you look at where it's supposed to be frosted, where it's supposed to be mirrored, and the details on the building, the pandas, and whatnot. 
It all seems to be there for me. Now, if you see something or if there are any experts out there that could point something out, I'd certainly appreciate it. But I feel fairly comfortable with what I see here. And as far as I'm concerned, these are good pandas and everything checks out fine. I hope that answered your questions. Uh, it certainly answered mine. These are two methods I think are fairly scientific and reliable that pretty much anybody can do. The tools uh, to do so are fairly cheap and readily available. Um, you can apply this to gold, silver, and as I mentioned, diamonds, copper, anything else, as long as you can find the specifications um, for the material and maybe the bar or the coin that you want to measure. I hope this has been helpful and it's been a lot of fun to do this one. I've been waiting to do this for a while. Thanks a lot for joining me here. If you have a moment, please leave a comment, whether it's positive or negative. I really appreciate any feedback at all because it gives me ideas for my next project, my next video. And of course, welcome to like, comment, or subscribe. Have a nice day.